It's a good one. I think it's a good one. Oh, that's another fish, that brim crank, baby. Oh, he's about to come on. If you're looking to catch bigger bass and you're a puns and you're struggling, you came to the right channel. Don't forget to drop a comment. Tell me, what are you struggling with? What baits are your fish biting on this time of the year? Or are you struggling catching them deep? Or are you struggling catching them shallow? We're trying to figure all of that out every single day we're going fishing. And today I'm going to show you the only colors you need to catch the biggest bass in your pond this spring. Yeah, I said it. I'm not lying, I'm not kidding, I promise you. The only type of color you need, bluegill, bluegill, brim, any kind of little brim bait would do. My goal is to help you catch the biggest bass in your ponds and lake. And if I don't help you guys, if I don't show you anything that's useful, I'm not doing my job. I hope you're ready as I am to go fishing and to get a line wet. And I'm not going to hold you guys up, man. Let's get to it. We got some great information. Let's go. Let's just see if we can sneak us a bite for the morning just to get the line with. Try this little drop shot rig. I haven't thrown a drop shot since this winter, but talking about absolute deadly finesse technique when bass are lethargic. It may not even be lethargic, but it is springtime and bass usually are just actively feeding the schools or whatnot. They're just bedding. Still can see we can get away with it. Is let that lure sink to the bottom like any other drop shot. And you want to keep your line pretty tight. Want to keep your rod tip up and keep that line tight. You want that vertical presentation. Now I want that lure laying in the mud or grass. You want it standing up. You want that lure to suspend vertically. Is there at least one bass out there with our name on it? If there is, I know that drop shot will figure it out. My drag, my drag, my drag. Oh no, my drag. Goodness gracious. I can't do anything with this little, this little baby rod. Oh, he's about to come on. Now that's a pig. That's a freaking pig. <laughs> oh my God. That's a, that's a pig. People back at home, that is a pig. Look at, oh my God. I gotta, I gotta take my sunglasses off. That is just a freaking pig. Can't okay, tell me that's not a pig. Big old pre-spud female here. That brim crankbait. Bass cannot stand brim around this time of the year. Oh my God. Get her some water real quick so we can get away. Scale zeroed out. Somebody tell me that's not correct. That is over nine pounds. Somebody tell me that's not right. That scale says 9.6 pounds. Are you freaking kidding me? What a football. Let's get her some more water. That's what I've been hearing. Well, let me get this big old girl back in the water. 9.6. I, almost 10 pounds. <laughs> that is amazing. Like I never caught anything this big. <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. You have a nice day. <laughs> thank you. Oh my God, I can't believe she came to play. Yes, she is. She's swimming off. She's swimming off. She's legendary. Let's go. I really was quite surprised. I just received this. I literally just ordered this lure, just received it a few days ago. This is my first day of it, bringing it out. First day getting it wet and it gives us great results. Like what I mentioned earlier, bluegill is probably the only color you need for the whole entire spring. Pre-spawn bass and spawning bass just can't not, they just cannot absolutely stand them. They just destroy them because they just, they are such a big pest and they eat bass eggs and bass fry as they're young and they do not want that. So. The way a bass is, they eat a bluegill, that's one less predator to worry about. You got to give the bass what they want. Make them react to something. What we're doing, we fishing that lure in some deep water. We have our brakes like, we have our brakes dialed all the way back. We really want this lure to fly as far as possible. Then we just start a steady retreat, bringing it back in. I may pop my rod a time or two. That's what I think happened on that last bass catch. I popped my rod to shake it free of a bit of a little bit of grass and she just destroyed it.
Is that a... Oh, that's another fish. I was just burning it back in. And look at that. It's a good one. I think it's a good one. You pull and drag for sure. Stay down. Don't you, don't you. Mm -mm. <sighs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I knew it. Oh, yeah, that drag got to get set just a bit tighter. I knew it. I freaking knew it. I knew it. It was only like a two and a half, maybe three pounder, but I just freaking hate to let a fish get away. And one other quick tip, when you pick up a, when you first pick up a lipless crankbait, you should definitely change those treble hooks because they really aren't that great. As you can see, I just lost a two pounder just like that. Fire back out there again, Captain. We have our other rod. We just changed it up to a kind of a, a shiner type of pattern. You just got the gold. Don't have much sunlight, but when the sun do peak from behind the clouds, this gold will definitely do a great job of flashing it. Just another way to change up the color since I just hooked two bags on that brim, that brim lip. Listen, no bites as a, made a few more casts with it just to see if any more bass wanted to play. But they just change up the coloration to see if maybe that what triggers another strike. That's a, that's a fish. He just <laughs> the smallest fish out there. How how did it get in all? Oh, like that's the second one I just missed. Yo, you want to live this and I just lost one. Like come on. Just like I said, you made just one one key change up, just switch colors and see if maybe the bass is give them something they're not used to, you know. Definitely gotta try it again. Just let that lure sink. They're out there. I see now. I was fishing shallow for the past few days, but now I see bass are out deep. Just letting that lure go down to like six to eight foot of water and they're clapping that lure on the bottom. Got thump. You just got thump. Another small one. Yo, they are not inhaling this bait. Three bites. Three freaking bites. Let's find out these fish have see let's find out these fish have moved. Just kind of walk towards the left a little bit from where I was casting not too long ago. Just trying to cover ground, cover water. It's the name of the game. You ready for something to just clap? Clap the freak out of that crank, baby. All it takes is one mistake, baby. Oh, that, that's a fish. Just tell me, oh, that feels good. Just stay down. Please do not throw my hooks again. It feels like a nice one. It feels like a nice one. Just please stay down. Stay down. What the free? Uh, is that a turtle? No. It's a fish. A catfish? <laughs> oh, man. Yo, check this out. We messed around and caught a catfish on ass in it. Not even targeting them. But it looks like that lipless male caught him in the tail. And I think he was even in the middle of taking a poop. <laughs> Let's get him released, get him back in there. It's freaking crazy. Never caught a catfish out of here before. Hmm, I wonder do they get any bigger. All right, we caught this nice size catfish right here. I don't ask in it, but let's get them back in the water. He got a fat belly on Get them released. Thank you for playing, buddy. He scurried off quick. Show you real quick what we're doing here. Get you up close and personal. Only thing we're doing, we're casting that lure as far as freaking possible. I'm trying to get it out to the middle of the pond if it's possible. Letting that lure sink. It's only like anywhere between five to eight feet at the most out there. Eight foot would be like the deepest of the deepest. But I'm gonna let it fall for like four or five seconds just to make sure it's on the bottom. Now, all I'm doing is just yo yo on that rod. Just bringing it up, lift, let it go back down to the bottom, lift it up. Don't lift it up too aggressively, too fast or too hard. You just gradually just lift up. You're lifting that bait up off the bottom, then you're letting it flutter right back down in their face. And you just kind of keep doing it. You, Slightly turn your handle, pull up the slack. Let it go back down, slightly turn your handle, pull up the slack. And then you just keep repeating. Something about that lure.
just how I keep fluttering. And then the router trap has all of those loud routers. Something about those loud routers and that brim fluttering in their face, they can't stand it. And it's an easy meal, an easy target for a badge. They probably like, what the heck is going on with that thing? And it's almost like you got no choice but to eat it. Bass are opportunists, remember that. Yup. Oh go what? He's not too big. I hope he didn't come off. Cause it feel like he was running at me and he came off. Please tell me he did not come off. Oh, he's starting to fight back now. Ooh, he is definitely starting to fight back. Oh yeah, he's digging those hooks in even deeper. Hey, he just come out here, man, and just try something different. Been throwing swim jigs all week and lizards or whatnot around beds and just to change it up to come out here. That we had what, five bites total? Only the second fish, other than the catfish we snagged, that doesn't count, so we caught two bass and we also missed three bass, but it's a great feeling to be able to come back and get another one. Little Joker got it good. Just a little half a powder. Just a little powder, a little less. Let's get him back in there. Come at 10, buddy. That lipless. Checking out with BOV. Today was a great day. We had a fantastic start to the day. And I hope you guys learned something. And don't forget, if you learned something, man, drop in the comment. Let me know what you learned today or what would you like to learn. And make sure you subscribe to the channel for more future videos because we have more great content coming. I promise you, we're hunting big bass down all year round. Really searching for a 10 pounder. We did catch a nine. That was just freaking insane. My biggest bass of my life. And I'm telling you, these techniques are proven. I'm not here to sell you anything. I don't believe in crankbaits as much, but there's a time and place for everything. When you understand that, you will become a better fisherman. Until next time, peace, stay safe. I love you guys. I'm out.